hello and welcome to Watch Box Studios. I'm Tim Masso and this is Watches Tonight. I've been away and I missed you, but we have an incredible program tonight as I am talking all about watches I would buy for the summer of 2022. Pilot's watches, dive watches, beaters, grail watches, everything is here along with your viewer wrist shots. A uh, quick public service announcement. I know that there are a lot of bots and malicious outfits online. Some of them emulate me and Watchbox. If anyone on social media asks you to contact them by any means other than Monday mailbag at thewatchbox.com, some sort of Watchbox email address, or tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's not us. No one from Watchbox, including me, will ever ask you in the comments below one of the videos to contact by Telegram or whatever wingnut messaging app. All of that is crap. Ignore it. Okay, that said, let's jump into the box. Edward Ledden of Sweden's in the box with Enrique Cassiano, Scott Wexlin, local boy from Chester, Pennsylvania. We got the real two fly from Beth Page, my old neck of the woods on Long Island. Mateo's in the box, Wachusiest from Dubai, John Smith, Arto Charles, Stagecoach 420 saying, let's get tacos. We're definitely doing the Taco Bell thing. This summer, we're absolutely doing it. Tim Masso, Taco Bell Day and all of my friends from the region are welcome. We've got Amar joining in, we've got Brady, we've got Marco B, first time catching a live show in ages, and we've got Yasis joining from Adelaide, Australia, getting up early. All right, and we've got Kevin Hawthorne from Lakeland, Florida, Brick Lane, and many more friends. Okay, let's jump straight into viewer wrist shots number one. Speaking of Beth Page, Ramish A. from Bethpage, New York, very close to my old home of Huntington, rocks the AP code 1159 automatic. In fact, I lived even closer to Bethpage. I was in Plainview when I was young. We have Tarek H. and his Patek Philippe Nautilus annual calendar, traveling by mini across New York's Verrazano Bridge. Stefano R. shows love for Urban Jurgensen with his Voodelainen inspired Model 1140. We have Jeff R. hiking Colorado with the latest Audemars Piguet Royal Oak offshore chronograph. Mikhail B. of Poland, a longtime viewer, planning his next adventure with his Chagere LeCoult Master Geographic. And Curtis A. welcomes a new member of the family, DJ the Pug, along with the Swatch Pug Swatch Watch. All right, guys, send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com. That is a real Watchbox email address. And uh, give me your Instagram handle. If you've got an Instagram handle, include that in the email with the wrist shot. Okay, friends joining in, we've got Jonathan Savage. Looking forward to listening. He's in Barbados. We've got Time Hill, Philly Watch fan, a local boy. Lander Hoffs, not a huge Roy Loke fan, but the offshores are awesome. And we got Sean Hansen, Lloyd Kerr, Smoko joining in from New York. And we got Aaron, our friend from Javid Nagan Watches. By the way, you got to check out Javid Nagan Watches if you had not. Very cool, surprisingly good fit, and a lot of fun because Aaron is a cool dude who's selling a cool watch. Okay, beater watches I want. This is the category of watch when you want something fun, but you know that bad things will happen. Uh, this is for hazardous operations like washing the car, washing the dog, gardening, firearms marksmanship, ATV riding when you know you're gonna get thrown off, golf, batting, driving ranges, all of this. These are the watches that you can afford to lose because you may very well. Everyone needs a beater watch, and no real person is going to take a $250,000 RM and just flat out destroy it. Maybe some people have the budget, but no one wants to deal with the inconvenience of that. Nope, you're going to need a beater watch, and the only question is whether you want to wear something cheap, but fun, or merely cheap. I choose the former, and here's what I pick. Count me among the devoted fans of the Swatch Omega Moon Swatch. Now, I don't know how big we'd make that picture, but what you're looking at right there is the original Moon Watch alongside the Bioceramic Collection Moon Swatch Mission to the Sun. So, dubbed the Moon Swatch, this is a 42 millimeter quartz chronograph that combines Swatch Watch pricing with Swatch Group's foremost luxury mark and its most venerated model. Some people think this is heresy. Some people think that this is apostasy by the Hayek family. I think it's a lot of fun. For $260, this corporate fusion is for folks who do have a sense of humor. You can see the Omega and the Swatch 
alliance symbol on the crown right there. We also have a double-signed pop culture gambit on the dial. And I think this is a watch for folks who are in on the joke and get it, who don't take their watches too, too seriously, or who take them seriously, but not dead seriously. And there is a difference. So nothing that's not a matter of life and death should be considered so grave that we can't enjoy it if it's done with good manners. And this is done with good manners. There's a real sense of love for the subject matter. And of course, the subject matter is equally Omega and Swatch. Swatch, after all, providing the money that ultimately resurrected Omega, and now Omega providing the permission as well as the style of the Moonwatch to help resurrect the Swatch brand, which has been absolutely hammered by smartwatches over the last seven years. At its peak in the early 90s, Swatch shipped well over 20 million watches a year globally. Now it's like three and a half million. Well, they've got big ambitions, and Omega deserves some credit, because if you believe Nicholas Hayek Jr., then they're going to shoot for... One million, are you, are you ready for this? One million moon swatch sales in China per year. And that's coming from a place where Swatch was selling three and a half million globally per year. They want to sell one million moon swatches in China. But we're not there yet because there's still a long wait list for these things. And if you go on Chrono24 right now, you're going to find them marked up between $1,500 and $4,000. So they're definitely not shipping a million of them anywhere, much less in just one country. So here's the thing. This is a watch that combines a lot that's appealing. They call it bioceramic. What does that mean? Well, it means one half of it is biologically sourced plastic. So if you're familiar with biodiesel, a lot of the same basic materials that go into a biodiesel oil can also be used to make a bioplastic. So this is one half plastic, one half ceramic. They combine it in a matrix that ideally should be the best of both shatterproof the way plastic is and scratch resistant the way ceramic is. Okay, specs are simple. 42 millimeters Velcro strap, which by the way is surprisingly NASA authentic as that's how the astronauts wear them. And then you've got a uh, timepiece with a basic ETA movement, probably a G10-212 with the date removed. Some call it the G10-211, but I'm not sure it technically has a name. It is a quartz chronograph with four jewels. Very simple. 30 meters water resistant in the luxury watch world is don't swim with it. Here, that's actually okay. Swatch bills, this is a swimmable watch, and I have yet to see anyone drown a 30 meter swatch, so I consider it to be reliable guidance. Each planet in the solar system, plus the sun, plus Earth's moon, gets an addition. They call the mission to, for example, mission to Earth, mission to the moon, mission to the sun. The mission to the sun would probably be a one-way trip, but again, it's the humor that counts. They're all a lot of fun. They're very colorful. The heritage of the moon watch, by the way, each planet in the solar system gets its own addition with a battery cover, you see that right there, that actually depicts the celestial body in question. So that is the mission to Mercury, and you have the image of Mercury right there, the hottest place that's not literally on fire in the solar system. So the Heritage of the Moon Watch receives nods from across the model range with a reference to Project Alaska on the mission to Mars. You can see both the combination of the red and the white. And uh, if we go back to the dial, you can see it has the Project Alaska 2's little lunar module sub-register hands, which is super cool and a much cheaper way to get into one of these than a Project Alaska or the Project Alaska re-edition. Uh, we also have an uh, array of colors. I'm normally quite predictable. You might think the green one, which represents Earth, would be for me, but I actually like the sky blue model, the tragically named Mission to Uranus. Um, and yes, we're going to call it Uranus. But they're all attractive watches. That particular sky blue is the coolest one for me. We're talking the Greek god of the sky, guys. What did you have in mind? Okay, so laugh if you will, but Swatch appears to be laughing all the way to the bank. If you go on their website right now, this is the Swatch brand, you can see that not only sold out, but sold out everywhere. They promise that more will ship soon. Uh, how soon is anybody's guess? But while these things are still fetching four figures on Chrono24 and eBay, I suspect soon isn't soon enough. Okay, so let's say you don't want to spend 
three figures on a beater watch, four figures on a beater watch, or wait weeks or months to get your hand on one. Well, the good news is Casio has you covered with the closest living descendant of the original 1983 G-Shock, and this is a beater watch par excellence. This, this is the mother of all beater watches. This is the 42.8 millimeter DW5600E 1V. It is packed with fun, and for $69.99, you're getting an awful lot of functionality, and if we're honest, longevity for your 70 bucks, which buys you an awesome, indestructible timepiece that packs the features in. Consider what you get in that 42 plus package. You get a chronograph, and not just a chronograph, but a split time chronograph, and not just split seconds, minutes and hours. It's the full package. It's amazing what you can do with integrated circuits. You get an alarm, which will sound at a certain time of day. You get a countdown timer that's programmable, which will sound once the countdown's done. You get a GMT, you get a backlight, and you get a perpetual calendar programmed through 2099. You get 200 meter water resistance, and you get a degree of shock resistance that no mechanical watch can match. How much shock resistance? Well, allegedly, you can whack it with a hockey stick and it will still run just fine. Plus, if you're like me, and well, I was in the military, I'm not anymore, but it has 12 and 24 hour functionality. Just as important, people who know watches respect these. You can wear it to a club meet, a watch fair, an industry trade show, red bar. The nods of approval never stop. This is not like looking at your phone to tell the time. This is very much a watch enthusiast's watch. And I would say even more than the moon swatch, this is a watch nerd watch for those who are dyed in the wool. I would say even if you don't need a beater watch and you're like me and you work in an office, you do need a G-Shock and this is the original or the closest thing to it in the current collection. So, before somebody tries the old saw about disposable electronics, I have seen these things from the 80s that are still running, and I personally have a G-Shock from 1998 that has needed nothing but a succession of batteries. So I rarely see people keep their mechanical watches for decades upon decades. I've now seen several G-Shocks that have performed exactly that kind of long-term service to their owners. Okay, let's see what's going on right here. Nate B saying, this is awesome. Thanks for spending time on affordable watches. Sean Hansen saying, Seiko Turtle, good five hundred dollar beater right here we have Jacob O saying I have one of these or maybe an older version not sure when they came out that is almost a decade old been through hell and never missed a beat need to throw a new battery in it before it dies and Jonathan Savage saying love the idea of a G-Shock as a perpetual calendar G-Shock after all is a universe of different watches I've seen G-Shock watches with GPS that's a little bit over the top but still the options are there and a G-Shock to me, should be the original G-Shock. I love the origin of the species, but again, it will go as crazy as you want to make it because there are so many G-Shock options. What's going on with Brick Lane? He's saying, I've still got my Casio remote watch from 1995. I remember that. I remember the Casio remote watch. That is very cool. Will Charlesworth joining in from London, staying up a little bit late with us in the UK. Okay, dive watches that I want. Now, I was going to talk about the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms and the Debitune DB28 GS Grand Bleu, but I've spoken extensively about those two high horology options, so let me be a little bit different. I would love to own an Omega Plo Prof. Of course, the original Plo Prof, the Seamaster 600 meter from the 70s, was developed for Comex, but never actually adopted officially by Comex. It was easily the most extreme looking dive watch of its era, but it doesn't hold a candle to the current version, the Seamaster 1200 meters. So, Quick rewind, back in 2009, the Plo Prof was reissued as a 1200 meter watch. The reissue was piggybacking on the popularity of the Anticorum Omega Mania auction of vintage Omega watches from 2007. So in the late 2000s, Omega suddenly realized that there was a bigger audience for some of its obscure older watches than it had originally thought. And the modern Plo Prof was the product of that. Now fast forward to 2015 and they made the watch a lot better. They made the watch what you see here. First, it's titanium now, not steel, and that includes the shark proof mesh bracelet. It also has a titanium dial, a ceramic bezel, 
possible. And take note, it's a no date, which cleans it up and purifies the watch. This is a no holds barred diver. Unlike the original Poprof, this one does have a helium release valve. It also has a remarkably extravagant telescoping crown guard structure that moves in and out with the crown. If you take a look, there's a little pusher up at two o'clock, you press the pusher, and now you can rotate the bezel in either direction. And the whole bezel is loomed, so it is spectacular in the dark. And again, the dial is titanium, which just looks cool. The clasp has a push button slider and a fold out dive extension, and it is a beefy machine. This watch includes beautiful elements, details on the dial side and the reverse, including caliber 8912. This is a level of movement finish that the original Plo Profs caliber 1002 could never imagine. Sure, being an Omega, it's mechanical finish, but those spiral arabesque Cote de Genève, the blackened screws, uh, the bevels, though machined, very neatly done and worth a display case back, which is notable because no Rolex diver, no matter how deep it's rated, has a display case back. It's coaxial, it's a chronometer, it's shock resistant, it's anti-magnetic, and the coax developed by George Daniels is still cool 23 years after its Omega debut. There's a lot to love here, and at $13,800, the price is high, but the price is right. I recommend buying it pre-owned, because that's the best way to get the same watch for less money. Remember, in terms of value, the Rolex Deep Sea, which could be considered sort of its rival in the market, that costs $13,850, and they took out one of the dive extensions this year, so it only has one dive extension, not two. A value and features advantage, Omega. All right, ball. I always love high value, and I also like to talk about watches that are less common, maybe less heralded, especially in wristwatch YouTube. So, the Engineer Hydrocarbon Original. This came out in 2020. It is a 40 millimeter watch, which solves one of the problems I always had with ball watches, which is that they're cool and packed with features, but they're also too big. This one remedies that problem. Sometimes the best values are just off the radar, and Ball, much like Zinn, is a small tool watch specialist that compensates for a lack of many original movements in manufacturer watchmaking by packing reasonably priced watches with useful features and original patented innovations, and you've got a lot of both of those here. So, you have a 40 millimeter steel watch that comes with a 50 fathoms like sapphire capped bezel that looks like a million dollars. It really does look very rich in a way that it conventional ceramic or aluminum anodized bezel never can. The loom is a combination of tritium tracer, so self-activating, needs no sunlight, and super luminova. It is electrifying, and as you can see, the whole bezel is loomed. The dial has a sandwich construction with depth to the indices. It's really very attractive and distinctive. It's not just an anonymous loom shot. You will have fun with this loom, and that's what luxury watches are all about. It also has a fun crown lock that really works. This thing locks into place to prevent the crown uh, from being sheared off, but also from being hit head on. Like crown guards can protect your crown from shearing, but if you hit it squarely on its end, even a conventional shouldered crown that has crown guards can still get damaged. This gives you the same level of protection that you'd get on a Panerai. You get COSC Swiss chronometer certification, which is important to me because I like to have refinement when I'm getting an ETA or Salida movement. I want to know that I'm getting the best, and you have that here. 1,000 Gauss or mil Gauss anti-magnetic, you get that too. It's 200 meters water resistant. This is a dive watch after all. It has a day date, which is convenient I always use my day date on my Dan Reuter. Uh, you will be surprised how often you use that calendar when you have it. It has a dive extension in the clasp and ball bracelets always have the quality of feeling more expensive than they are. Finally, Ball includes its spring lock hairspring guard internally, uh, which helps to improve both the durability to protect against damage and the chronometry as it more rapidly returns the hairspring to its proper concentric orientation. Plus, they add a system they call the amortizer, which will lock the winding rotor in place when you know the watch is going to be subjected to particularly violent impacts. And it's rated up to 7500 G. It's important to remember that the standard moon watch is typically described as shockproof to 5,000 G. So this is a full 50% more than a moon watch, and this was never intended for space flight. So what does all this cost? How about $3,349? Again, 
you get your money's worth with this watch. And there are examples now available pre-owned for under three grand. I don't think you can do better for the price. And this is a true La Chaux de Fonds manufactured Swiss luxury watch from a fun brand of people who are fairly accessible and very much watch collectors themselves. What else is going on here? Sean Hansen in the chat box saying, Ball makes a wide range of approachable watches and they have their own design DNA. We have Bruno joining in from Germany, staying up late in continental Europe. Uh, we have Enrique Cassiano saying, the Ball amortizer is Richard Miel Tech for about 5,000 bucks or less. Christopher N saying, I own two moon swatches and I enjoy them, but don't really wear them. Well, then you might want to sell them while they're still $2,000 watches. Right here, Mark S saying, Tim only likes Ball because of his longstanding crush on Magali Maitre. Well, that's true, but she's married, so I don't have a chance. Uh, what else is going on here? Jacob O saying, are the bracelets held with two sets of screws? I believe some of them are. Some ball bracelets are built absolutely gonzo in terms of toughness. And then right here, we have Brick Lane saying, a little bit non sequitur, but I think Hitler had a JLC Reverso. Uh, it's very possible he did. But then again, I had two, so I would rather the watch be associated with me than him. Uh, JLC, if you're looking to rehabilitate this model, I would gratefully accept a freebie. What else is going on here? Horatio saying, my Zin U50S on a bracelet checks all the marks to handle harsh conditions, my go-to beater. Hey, not a bad choice. That is a very durable watch, especially if you get it in full tegament. Stefano saying, my 6900 G-Shock Solar Multiband 11 years on, still going like day one and keeps time immaculately. Okay, let's see what else is going on here in the box. We have Nasrun joining in saying Tissot PRX chronograph would be great for a watch this year. Okay guys, let's jump back to our regularly scheduled program and viewer wrist shots number two. JCS, a longtime viewer, joins in with his vintage IWC Caliber 89. Jim B and his IWC Big Pilots watch. Fill the frame, wear it in good health, Jim. We got Basel F of London flying high with his Hoyer Pilot chronograph with the Le Mans 5100, one of the great cam-operated chronographs of all time. Neil W. is the real deal, by the way, with his Bell & Ross BRV 293 GMT and full flight gear. Paolo M. of Philadelphia and his Grand Seiko White Birch joined from the local Jefferson Hospital. Okay, the ultimate chronograph. There's only one watch that I could pick as my ultimate chronograph for fun in summer of 2022. Although I believe it's being phased out, the chronograph that I want most is the Long und Heine Albert. Its extended name is King Albert of Saxony, as that is how Long und Heine names its watches after legendary German nobleman. And this is a timepiece that not only shares its name with my grandpa, uh, but it packs the world's most beautiful movement and nothing else can surpass this. Maybe some match, but none surpass. Guys, that is the gold standard. Take a good look at this. The closer you get, the more impressive it becomes. It has everything, and I make no apologies. Nothing is better. This is an example of why no vertical clutch chronograph will ever surpass the beauty of a lateral clutch mechanism. Look at all the color. Silver, gold, violet, blue, all of it, all at once. Look at the diamond capstone atop the balance staff. Unlike the synthetic rubies, that's the real thing, a brilliant cut diamond. Look at the double solarized ratchet wheel. Not only is it solarized, but each tooth of the wheel is micro beveled. Look at the freehand engraved balanced cock with the black polished swan's neck and a giant fired blue screw. Look at that lateral clutch coupling, which has been immaculately cut away, almost like a skeleton movement with just the bare amount of steel necessary remaining. This is it, guys. This is Nirvana. This is the peak. Everything you ever wanted in a manually finished watch available here, and it takes hours just to make one of those black polished screws. So dials are sharp too. You can wear this watch upside down and it'll look great, but on the dial side, you won't regret it. You can go Grand Faux Enamel, which you see right here, or the black dial is galvanized sterling silver, and that is exactly how I would order mine. This dial is intensely gorgeous, finely grained, and immaculately prepared. Each hand is cut manually and finished the same way. This is as good as great gets.
Also worth mentioning, take note, chronoseconds and minutes hands work coaxially from the center of the dial, and because it's a mono pusher with coaxial seconds and minutes, it doesn't actually look like a chrono at first glance. The mechanism is a mono pusher, and you can see in this picture that it's coaxial with the crown. Caliber 4 tech specs, the best of everything. Lateral clutch, column wheel, manual wind, 46 hours of power reserve, overcoil hairspring, a big slow beating balance that's almost the radius of the movement, just like an old pocket watch. Everything is customizable. You can get white gold, you can get platinum, you can get rose gold, and heck, you can go crazy because this is the company that built entire movements to order from Mammoth Tusk Ivory. That's what you're looking at there. Mammoth Tusk Ivory, which is not controlled under sites treaties because the mammoth is extinct. And look at the engraving on those number and name plates. This is the ultimate, guys. This is the peak of Olympus. Okay, the Albert case in white gold, rose gold, or platinum measures a substantial 44 millimeters, but I would actually hit the gym and bulk up specifically for the privilege of wearing this monster. What a watch. Okay, viewerist shots number three. Stuart M. of Switzerland captures the majesty of the mountains with his Omega Seamaster Professional. B.W. returns via the channel from a vacation on the continent, including the Patek Philippe Museum. Mike and Sammy attend a wedding with father and son watches, one Omega, one Minecraft. Mohammed E. and Luna the Cat gather in mutual appreciation of his Seamaster Diver 300 meter. Jeremy L. of America's Alabama combines a Yima Rally Graph and MGC GT for summer fun. Guys, send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com. Okay, pilot's watches that I would buy. Okay, this is the part where I have to admit that I'm not smitten by the romance of aviation, and that's coming from a person who has soloed and cross-country flown aircraft. From where I sit, flying seems like an endless cycle of misery involving bad airline food, harrowing ordeals, and mass misery, all of which have been present in abundance everywhere this summer. Perhaps I'm drawn to my favorite pilot's watch precisely because it appears more, it appeals more to the fictional notion of aviation, the romance of the idea, rather than the reality of sitting crammed in a tube with strangers. So Patek Philippe, which has no meaningful aviation history, sort of appeals to the what-if escapism that you imagine in the mind's eye when you picture yourself at the controls of a pre-war Boeing Model 314 Clipper. And that's exactly what we're getting right here with the 5524G. So, after all, it is more fun to imagine that you are Howard Hughes or Amelia Earhart than to embrace the reality of ending up insane or lost, respectively. And not everyone buys the notion. This watch from Patek Philippe caused a rolling controversy when it launched in 2015 due to gripes about the authenticity of a Patek aviation watch. They have no real history. And the appearance of the model, which to the eyes of many, evoked a lot of cheaper models from Longines, IWC, and Zenith. And there's no doubt, at arm's length, that is how it looks. But everything about the 5524G Calatrava Pilot travel time is extravagant beyond the conventions of the aviation watch genre, and it's one of only a handful of true haute horlogerie pilot watch options. Look at that dial. The closer you get, the better it becomes enormous cathedral style hand with a broadsword format. We have applied white gold numerals, railroad track seconds and minutes. We have a lovely hideaway second time zone hand. You can disappear it when you don't need it. You have AM PM indicators for both local and home time, which is something travel time watches rarely do. What appears at first glance to be the small second sub register is actually the date. And when you get close to the dial, you can see it's a beautiful dark blue sandpaper grain. They sweated the details in plus les Watt when they designed this model, which is to say God here is in the details. That is what sets it apart from IWC and Zenith and Longines. This Patek Philippe is the full package. 42 millimeters in white gold. You can now get it in rose gold as well. It's a dual time, a date, 60 meters water resistant, something you will rarely see. This is the only 60 meter Calatrava of which I'm aware, and that is for all time, not just in the current collection. It even comes with a unique cross-hatched 
aviator style strap and a clevis style buckle that is still unique to these Calatrava pilots. So once again, this is a watch that was all about attention to detail and fully realizing the concept of a what if Patek made a pilot's watch pilot's watch. The 2022 retail price of $55,590 seems almost sane in a world where pre-owned dealers are charging almost twice as much for a mundane steel Rolex pilot's watch. Given the choice between this and a Patek for almost the same money, give me the Calatrava. Okay, viewer wrist shots number four. I asked, you answered, and we're starting off with a good long-term friend in support of all of my social media, Dylan L. So, joining with Rolex, Fried Rice, and the Talking Time with Tim Masso Facebook group Thermal Mug. Join me on Facebook, Talking Time with Tim Masso. You will see Dylan there. Mike T is the man with his Carl F. Bucherer Monero 42 and his white 2020 C8 Corvette. Jimmy Y of San Francisco catches lunch in Chinatown with his Tudor Ranger, looking good, nice shot by the way. Bradley W's in Martha's Vineyard celebrating his admission to medical school with a Grand Seiko Snowflake. As good as it gets on the wrist and beyond. John B. of Toronto drives us home with his 1950s Omega Honeycomb dial and 1968 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. You better know I'm a Cadillac man. I'm all about 60s American classics. Send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com and when you do, please include your Instagram handle if you have one. Okay, Grail watches defined more by aura than category. For the purpose of simplifying this choice, I'm going to limit myself to watches currently in production, of which the Patek Philippe inline perpetual calendar. 5236P is one. My God, do I love this watch. It is my favorite watch that debuted in 2021. And if I were to count 2021 and 2002 in aggregate, both this year and last, it's still my favorite of all the watches that have debuted. It takes... Well, the 2022 model launch that spoke to me the most, um, but then it combines a bunch of new elements, such as the dial style, with everything I loved about the old 5235G regulator, um, but more legible than the regulator, which admittedly was hard to read. This gives you conventional sec center hands for the hours and the minutes, that's a win. But you also get a satin blue dial, the brushed texture of the old regulator, uh, but you get a gradient blue with additional color added. It's a light fade from the center of the edge that I adore, and it's all capped with a case drafted straight from the historic 3448 perpetual calendar. And, and you do get the 5236P in platinum with that very bezel case profile and lug design. At 41.3 millimeters in platinum, the size is pretty bold. And with platinum construction on a watch of this size, it has an impressive weight in the hand and on the wrist, which I actually dig. I like the heft of a premium watch to feel like I'm wearing all that money. And I should say the movement, caliber 31260 PSQL, is a micro rotor of modern design that combines both beauty and architecture, which is the size and relative arrangement of the pieces, with finish and that is how they are individually decorated. It has both architecture and finish, like the best movements. Thanks to the micro rotor, to total thickness of the watch is just 11 millimeters. Retail price for the 5236P is $136,020. Do you think Brian Govberg will hook me up? I don't know. Bombard his email address and ask him. All right, Debitune DB29 Maxi Chrono Tourbillon. This is the ultimate chronograph if we want to add refinements beyond the chronograph. So, it wasn't a slam dunk. I looked at the 46 millimeter case and I suspected this wasn't a watch I could actually wear. Since this is my wish list and not a general recommendation list, I couldn't include a watch too big for me. But Debitune case sizes are always deceptive, and the nearly lugless DB29 wears perfectly round on the wrist like an old 70s JLC Snowdrop Memovox. So 46 millimeters also becomes the lug to lug dimension, which means across the wrist it's actually shorter than any standard full bracelet 40 millimeter Rolex. I'm back in the game. I'm also not a rose gold guy, but at this level of watchmaking from De Batun, I suspect any request within reason will be honored, and they do do custom, so I would ask the company for white gold, and I bet that could be arranged. The DB29 dial looks chaotic at first glance, but it makes solid sense. You can see the Breguet hands for hours and minutes. Okay, 
that's easy. The other hands from the center out are a 24 hour chronograph hand, a 60 minute chronograph hand, and a 60 second chronograph hand. By putting all of the hands at the center and giving you long time intervals, Denis Flageolet, the watchmaking genius behind Debitune, has created the Maxi Chrono, a more readable chronograph format. Okay, so let's consider the caliber 2039 hiding behind the 29's Hunter case pack, and it is a Hunter case pack. The entire set of bridges, black polished, five day power reserve, three column wheels, and a triple clutch coupling, combining the best of lateral clutches and vertical clutches. A 30 second tourbillon, that is it spins twice every minute, with a beat rate of 36,000 vibrations per hour, like an El Primero, comprised of white gold and silicon and titanium. The tourbillon, the entire assembly, weighs only 18 hundredths of a gram. And I should mention, this has a rated accuracy of better than one second a day. This watch, the 2014 GPHG Chronograph Prize winner, is a GPHG laureate with all of the prestige that entails. It is uncommon even at Watchbox, as we have never had an example to sell. And at $300,000, your guess is as good as mine when I'll be collecting my own example. Guys, thanks for joining. Remember, Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com. Follow me on Instagram, Tim Masso on Instagram. I would love to see you there. Thanks to Sean operating the switcher tonight. And thanks to you for making the best job in the world possible. Time out, Tim out. Thanks for logging on.